This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. And welcome to the program. I am Roby Brock. We are glad to have you with us. We are now joined by Senator John Bozeman. He's in Washington, D.C., back from the Arkansas recess. He's back up in Washington working. Welcome back to the program, Senator. Good to have you with us. Hey, Roby. Thank you so much, as always, for having me. Let's talk about Congress being back in action here. Last week, we had Representative Steve Womack from your hometown of Rogers on the, on the program. And he, was, he, he said that he thought that maybe two major things might happen before uh, the election and the October recess. Number one, he thought that some budget bills would get passed. And number two, he said that there is a critical need for Zika funding to get, uh, to get passed. What do you see besides those two issues? Is there anything else that you see that might, uh, might get passed during this next uh, couple of weeks? Well, Roby, we're actually working on, on the big water resource uh, development bill right now. And I think we'll pass that uh, probably by the end of the week. Uh, those things aren't glamorous, but what that has to do with our inland waterways, our ports, our harbor, all of the things that uh, are transported in that manner. So it's very, very important. This is a Jim Inhoff bill and Barbara Boxer. You can imagine those two are very, very different in their viewpoints. The one thing that they do agree on though is that we need to spend, we need to invest in our nation's infrastructure. Um, what is the holdup on Zika funding? Lots of back and forth, uh, some finger pointing between Democrats and Republicans. From your perspective, what's the holdup on Zika right now? Well, right now the Democrats are saying that, that it adversely affects Planned Parenthood and things like that. That's not the case, uh, but, but the negotiations are going on literally as we speak, and I think that'll get worked out probably before, you know, later on uh, in the next few days. Uh, so that's a good thing. We'll get Zika done. Right now the CDC has the money that they need uh, to do what they're supposed to do, but that money's not going to last forever. And so it is something that's very, very important that we reach a compromise, working together, much like we've done on the water resources bill, to get that uh, in the position that we're in now, get it finished. We need to do the same thing with Zika, which is so, so very important. So you were back in Arkansas for several weeks during the, uh, the summer recess there. You did a lot of touring of the state. What are some things that you maybe picked up on when you were back in the state doing those, uh, those tours and that travel that you are now taking to Washington right now that you want to see some action taken on more immediately? I think really the two things at the top of the list had to do with the economy. The jobs, jobs, jobs. Most Arkansans now have a job they're concerned about the future. They're concerned about the next six or eight months. You know, are you going to have a job then? Uh, the regulatory atmosphere by, the, by our small business, big business, uh, all of those things coming down, it's created this sense of uncertainty where nobody really knows what the, the rules are. So you can play with good rules, you can play with bad rules. If you don't know what it is, then it's very, very difficult. So we're not having people hire as a result of that. We're not having companies invest in their companies, and as a result, we have this big wet blanket on the economy. The other thing that's so important that, that people were talking about is national security. Uh, they're very concerned about ISIS, they're, they're concerned about the threats from overseas, and, and, and don't feel like that's been handled very well at all. I've got three grown daughters, I love them dearly, I'd do anything for them. Uh, the city, the county, our state can't protect them from ISIS though. Uh, only the federal government can do that. So we need to do whatever it takes. We need to spend the dollars. We need to listen to our uh, leadership in the field and uh, formulate a plan and then uh, prosecute that plan so that we can win that battle. Back to something that you said on the economy there, and I don't disagree with you that there are some uh, regulatory burdens that certainly get put on a lot of businesses, but unemployment's under 4% in Arkansas. Jobs are on the rise in Arkansas. We have had a number of business announcements and business expansion announcements. If all of that stuff is truly as bad as it would seem to be from some of the rhetoric that I'm hearing from you and others, uh, wouldn't we have higher unemployment? Wouldn't we not see some of these job expansions coming? Well, we have a tremendous number of people that are un underemployed, and we also have a large number of people that have simply given up. But no, I, I think this is the slowest recovery uh, since 1949, something like that, ever. Uh, president Obama's increase in GDP is going to be the worst of any president that we've ever had. 
So these are real things affecting real families. We've gotten some good news lately about family income going up, which is a positive thing. But it's, it's, it's regulation, Roby, like this new who's, who's exempt from overtime, who's not, raising the thresholds up, uh, over doubling it, the thresholds, uh, it being the same in, in a town like Dumas, Arkansas, as San Francisco. Those things don't make sense. And as a result, it really is putting a crimp in, in uh, business people's uh, hiring, small business people in particular, uh, our nonprofits, uh, our universities, uh, business in general. All of those people are going to be affected dramatically. So that's a good example of tremendous regulatory uh, action being taken by a group of people, the Labor Department, uh, that really are accountable virtually to nobody except for the president. And maybe a U.S. Senator from Arkansas will see. All right, we've got to take a quick commercial break here, Senator Bozeman. Uh, we're going to come back and talk a little politics in addition to the policy that we just have. We're back with more of Senator John Bozeman right after this. And we are back. We are joined by Senator John Bozeman and, uh, from Washington, D.C. Senator, let's begin with uh, the, the latest in the presidential campaign. We're going to play a little game here. I'm going to give you three headlines to choose from. You get to pick one. I'm going to ask you a question on that topic. So <laughs> here's headline number one. Emails show, show that Colin Powell unloaded on Clinton and Trump. Number two, Donald Trump reveals his weight loss goal. And number three, Hillary Clinton tweets 20 questions that Donald Trump needs to answer now. Do you want Colin Powell, Trump's weight loss, or Hillary Clinton's Twitter questions? I, I'll, I'll put that up to you. Whatever you feel like is, <laughs> whatever you feel like you're most, you feel like you're most ready to ask the question of. Well, I'm ready to ask on all three, but we'll pick one. Let's go Hillary Clinton's 20 questions that Trump needs to answer right now. One of the questions that she has thrown out on Twitter for Donald Trump to answer is to disclose and help people understand better his financial relationships with people across the globe. And, and basically some more disclosure on that. Is he in business with some people that might not have the greatest reputation uh, in different parts of the world? Is that a concern to you? And do you want to see him uh, disclose more financially so that you understand better how the potential president of the United States may be connected? No, I think disclosure is fine, and, and you know that's something that certainly needs to be looked at. Mike Pence has released his tax records uh, to the public, and and you know has been very open about that. So yeah, no, he needs to do that. On the flip side, certainly there's questions to be asked about the foundation and who the relationships uh, have been, uh, you know, with the Clintons through the year through the years, particularly when she was Secretary of State. And there has been some information and some reporting out there, but certainly could be a lot more. Uh, let's talk about your reelection campaign. Your opponent has criticized you for some overseas travels. I had Connor Eldridge on the program a couple of weeks ago. I gave him a, a chance to talk a little bit about that, challenged him a little bit on that. I thought that some of his claims are um, a little overinflated in terms of the numbers. But, um, but I'll ask you, how do you justify those overseas trips? How do you explain those to voters? Well, I was elected in 2001, and, and if you remember, in fact, November of 2001, so right after 9-11, the Capitol where I'm standing now was actually closed down for the first several months to visitors. The security was that tight. I was really fortunate and had a lot of people that took me under their wing and gave me some really important positions. I was on the Speaker of the House's Drug Task Force. I was on the NATO Parliament, which is one of the most select things that you can be on in the House. And as a result, we were traveling all over the world, encouraging our allies to participate more in Afghanistan than Iraq started, trying to get their GDP spending up where they were spending on defense. And so as a result, I spent a lot of time overseas. Uh, I was in Iraq seven or eight times. I was in Afghanistan seven or eight times. And, and when we would go there, we didn't just go to Iraq or Afghanistan. We'd go to Turkey, we'd go to Jordan, we'd go all over that area. Uh, again, uh, you know, Pakistan, talking to the leadership of those countries, trying to understand what was going on uh, so that we could do a good job as we were voting. I was on the Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, so really had committees of jurisdiction over uh, lots of different areas and was really proud to represent our country in that, in that way. 
All right, fair enough. I wanted to just give both sides a chance there. Uh, Connor Eldridge, your Democratic opponent, has also challenged you to more debates. You have said you're very satisfied with the one debate that will take place at AETN later this fall. Uh, in 2010, you had at least two debates, though. Um, should voters have more of an opportunity to see you guys, the candidates for the U.S. Senate, side by side than just this one time on a, on a stage on public television? Well, we've, you know, again, that's going to be a great debate. It always is on AETN, so we're committed to doing that, have been all along. And so, you know, we felt like that was the route to go. That's not uncommon. Uh, that was the Mike Beebe rule. Uh, and, you know, Mike was, uh, you know, in such a, you know, was in a, in a position that he felt like that was best. So I, I don't think anybody can criticize me for not being out and about and willing to talk uh, at events, talk to the individual voters, uh, you know, talk to businesses, you name it, and as a result, uh, be before the public in that way. And the other thing that I'm good about doing, Roby, is when you ask me a question, I'll give you an answer, uh, not a, a, a um or a we need to study it or whatever. Uh, you know, I'm pretty upfront with giving the people of Arkansas uh, the answers to the questions that they have. And then also, once I answer that question in a particular way, uh, go to Washington and then fulfill what I've said I will do in that regard. Well, so my question is, shouldn't voters have more than one opportunity to see you guys on a stage standing side by side with each other? Well, you know, I would, I would agree with Mike Beebe and say no, that, that the AETN debate is ample and uh, we're really looking forward to it. And I think we'll have a, a good debate. On the other hand, you actually have to answer questions. And so hopefully uh, my opponent will be willing to do that. Uh, he hasn't been very forthcoming in that regard so far. So. Uh, Again, I, I think it is important that the people of Arkansas understand where we're at on the issues, as I've tried to explain today. If you would like to uh, have more opportunities for you and Connor Eldridge to answer more questions, I will give you the form of my TV show to do that beyond the AETN debate if you want to, Senator Bozeman. Uh, we're going to have to wrap it up there. No, I appreciate that. And, and we always appreciate working with you, Robbie, and, and uh, you know the great job that you do, not only with your television show, but your you know, talk business, your publication, it also does such a great job. Thank you, Senator. I appreciate that. All right, always good to visit with you. He is Senator John Bozeman, Republican from Rogers. Good to visit with you. We will see you next time, Senator. We're back with more. We're back with more right after this word from our sponsors.